I spoke about this last week, but I want to reiterate the idea again. Setting goals for myself this month is about bringing more of what I want to be doing into my daily life. Every year, time seems to be getting faster and faster, days becoming weeks, weeks becoming months. I find myself looking back at the months of 2020 already past and wondering, what did I do with all that time? Certainly not nothing, but arguably a lot less than I could have achieved in the same period if I'd put my mind to it. Setting myself goals has given me a means to reflect on what it is I want to be doing with my time and to set intentions for the time ahead of me. I might achieve the goals, I might not, but in the end, it doesn't really matter how many press-ups or pull-ups that I do, or how many kilometers that I cycle, it just won't matter. What will matter though, is that for better or worse, I will have brought the power of mindfulness into the way I'm spending my time. And when the end of July rolls around this time, I can look back at the month and feel that it didn't just simply pass me by. All of the footage in this video and there really was a mountain of it to sort through, came from a two-day adventure around Loch Tay and Loch Tummel with my friend Nicky. Nicky lives part-time in his van whilst he fully converts it into his full-time home. Although even incomplete as it is, it makes the perfect companion for overnight trips like this one. A great excuse to get out a long cycle, we visited a village called Fortingall, which lies slightly to the north of Loch Tay. It's home to what is believed to be amongst the oldest living trees in the world and almost certainly the oldest in the UK. Modern estimates place this tree around 2,000 to 3,000 years old with the higher estimates being in the region of 5,000 years old or above. So being myself a creature of only 29 years and probably less than half the age of this tree's least developed twig, I felt very humble to stand beneath his branches. I say his branches, but the tree was recently found to be changing sex from male to female, a natural phenomenon that is far from being unique to humans it would seem. As is so often the case with mechanical systems held together with nuts and bolts, some of the bolts fell off. Not knowing where or when this happened, there was no hope of finding them, I just thanked my luck that the bike was still rideable when I discovered this at the furthest away point of the ride. Someone close to me asked me this week if I'm planning any holidays in the near future. Well, I'm not, and I told them as much. But after the conversation, it got me thinking about the idea of it. Holidaying, escaping, getting away from everything, leaving behind work and responsibility in favour of rest and relaxation. And I realised that, for now, I'm so content being immersed in doing exactly what I'm doing, building a new life for myself, that I don't even really feel any need to get away from that life. Don't get me wrong, it's taken my entire 20s to get to the point where I can say this honestly. For the first time, I feel I am exactly where I want to be and for the time being, I am doing exactly what I want to be doing. Overnight trips like this fit perfectly into my teaching schedule and rather than feeling like an escape, this felt simply like more of me doing exactly what I want to be doing with my time anyway. Having fun, moving my body, playing, exploring myself and all the interesting things around us. And among other things, just allowing myself to get lost in the moment instead of worrying about the future as has so frequently plagued the years of my 20s. When I was a child, I used to love climbing trees. In my teens, my mum used to take pleasure in showing me a video that she had taken of me as a child. After an argument with my dad, I climbed a tree at the bottom of the garden and I just sat up there for hours. Even before being shown that video by my mum, I found that I often revisited those memories of climbing trees. Even to this day, it is still something that has never left me. In an early attempt to offer my skills in service of others, I once broke a rib trying to rescue a cat from a tree. As soon as I reached out my arm to the cat, it leapt directly towards me. I tensed up in fright and broke the branch I was standing on. The fall was short and I landed on a fence. My arms on one side and the rest of me on the other. Ouch. Still, even in adulthood, when I climb a tree, I can feel a subtle shift way down inside me. This is not something I'm going to try and explain in words, but it is something incredibly profound and I believe deeply human. If there is a part of you that thinks that climbing trees is a childish thing to do, then I completely understand. But perhaps consider that for millions of years of human evolution, 
Becoming strong and adept at climbing trees was the very essence of maturing into adulthood. In modern life, as far as I can tell, the only thing made of wood that we so devote ourselves to the mastery of may be the chair. After a much needed and intensely nourishing cold evening dip in the loch, nature treated us to another of her wonders. On the way back to the van, we stumbled upon the 400-year-old ruins of Finlarig Castle, built by Duncan Campbell in 1629. The castle was visited by the Scottish outlaw turned folk hero Rob Roy MacGregor in 1713. And at 400 years old, it's not quite as old or impressive as the Forting Oil Yew Tree, but it was amazing to explore ruins of such an old castle that are so intact and well preserved despite being completely open to the public. Alongside the castle are these eerie remains completely filled with earth of a mausoleum built in 1829. When it comes to sleeping outside, as far as I'm concerned, the best way to experience this is in a bivvy bag. As the Dubliners once sang, the sky for a roof and your candle a star. There is nothing quite like waking up, snug as a bug in the middle of the night, opening your sleepy eyes and finding yourself under a clear black night sky, twinkling with the light of a billion white stars. Of course, some nights are rainy, some nights are windy, and these nights may test your mettle. But you can't have the good without the bad, the up without the down. Just like black goes with white, front with back, and inside with outside. And if you've prepared yourself well, all night spent outdoors, end with a warm bowl of porridge in the morning. Correct me if I'm wrong, but after a cold night in a sleeping bag, there are few things quite like a bowl of steaming oats to mend your spirits. After breakfast we drove up to Tummel Bridge. My body feeling strong and recovered after my cold dip in the loch the night before, it wasn't long until we were back in the saddle and traversing the north road of Loch Tummel. We took a short photo stop at the Queen's View overlooking the loch. The viewpoint is alleged to be named after Queen Isabel, the wife of King Robert the Bruce. She is said to have hidden here in the nearby forest after the Bruce was defeated by the English at the Battle of Methin in 1306. We soon made an unplanned but highly appreciated lunch stop in Pitlochry. We could not have been luckier with the weather and I'm very pleased to say that oat milk has finally started to migrate out of the city and into the countryside much to the delight of vegan latte lovers like myself. After lunch, Nikki replaced a punctured inner tube and we got back on the move. The hot soup and coffee resting in my belly about to be all the more welcome when we arrived at an absolutely stunning location called the Lynn of Tummel for a swim. This was my fifth wild swim this month and I'm really starting to notice the subtle differences. Getting into the water is getting easier, I'm able to stay in the water longer with each passing swim and the time it takes me to stabilise the mental and physical turmoil that cold water shock sends the mind and body into is definitely getting shorter with each venture. I don't want this to come across as simply ego-centred boasting, but I do want to highlight that this month alone three people who would not otherwise have tasted the thrill of swimming outdoors have now experienced it as a direct result of being in contact with me during this period. Inspiring others is a huge motivator for me in doing these things, and that also equally applies to making these videos. I hope in doing so I can inspire a wider range of people to get out and try something like this as well. If you wind up going out and trying something you see in this video, I would love to hear about it in the comments. With that said though, these activities can be dangerous, so please make sure that you do take sensible precautions if you are trying anything new and outside of your comfort zone. It's worth noting here that despite how positive all this looks, I finished the week behind on my pull-ups and press-ups. 
I gave my body a rest for the day before the trip and for a couple of days after the trip as well. But in any case, it's not about the daily average, it's about consistency over the entire month. And at only halfway through the month, there's still plenty of time to get back on track. I want to end this video by saying a huge thank you to Anthea at Yoga Healing Studio in Glasgow for giving me this book. This trip just wouldn't have been as exciting as it was without this brilliant and very well chosen book dropping in through my letterbox a few days before I left. If you stuck with me to the end, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again really soon. Have fun, be safe. <laughs>